Dufferin Infants in Newport, South Wales, is piloting a radically different approach to early years education. From 2008, it will replace Key Stage 1 in Wales. The new foundation phase for three to seven-year-olds places a greater emphasis on learning through play. Many years ago, you might have seen the whole class sitting down. And some of those children will have understood the lesson, the objective, but some children wouldn't have. And those children who didn't would have still been sitting on that carpet. They would feel failures, and not because they are not capable of reading and writing, but they are not ready to, and they were not developmentally mature to. So in the past, it's the, the children who mature developmentally have been the ones that have succeeded. Okay. Right, Tyler, would you like to do a forward roll demonstration down the back? Forward roll. Off we go. Hands out. Bath head teacher Phil Pope has come to see the changes in action. He'd like to do something similar at his school, but he's worried about the impact on SATS results. Excellent. There is a risk that if we introduce more play, that we have less time to do maybe the more formal aspects of the curriculum. The children might initially achieve less well, and it's a risk because of the nature of our in intake um, and the achievement of some of the children. It's a risk uh, we would have to be pretty certain of winning. So far, the changes in Newport have only been introduced in reception. Right, Robbie. Find me a little word. A key aspect is lower adult pupil ratios. In the reception class, we've got a ratio of one to eight. So we've had a lot of extra classroom assistance and support within the classroom. This has then enabled us to work in very small groups which you've been able to differentiate so can meet the children's needs which you, we couldn't if you had one teacher with 30 children. <laughs> Speaking and listening has been catered for and extended and the children are much more confident than they have previously been because again we're working at their own level. You do at the end of a sentence. Now, Phil's relieved to see that the reception children who are ready do learn to read and write, but the rest of the class will come to this much later. Can. What does that say? Can. A. Now I'll do the boxes, say the sounds. Ba. We got a. Can a bird. Right. And what comes through is that as you come through the door, there's that care, that, that wanting the children to succeed and to be balanced members of community. And we've talked mm. before about mm. to be that, they need to be able to read and write. Mm. We're not talking Absolutely. of ignoring the we basic skills not. at all, no. but actually giving stronger foundations That's for right. those to be built on. And we all realise that children need time to, to play. Mm. They need time to reflect. They need time to repeat what they do. But and there's still the basic skills coming through. When we went through the, the, the reception skills. classrooms, yes. the children were writing yeah. and reading yes. yeah. to varying, yes. varying levels. Yes. And I think that reassurance for parents, mm. and where the parents need to be reassured mm. that their mm. children will mm. still be learning mm. and that the outcome at year 11 or year 7 or wherever it needs to be measured will be better. Should be better. Hopefully. Will be, yes, definitely absolutely. be better. There's a lot more time spent outdoors and learning through doing rather than completing exercises in books and more speaking in Welsh. What? Palawadi, hun? No. Glass, 
the changes are being phased in and will eventually include years one and two. No, no, yeah. That's an area that there's a, a lot of discussion about the knock-on effect to Key Stage. Key Stage 2 yeah. and, and adapting the curriculum in Key Stage 2, yeah. certainly when children enter because they will have had this very active uh, time uh, before they go, but hopefully we'll have a much more solid yeah. base to go well, into. That can be difficult enough anyway. Yes. So what have you got on the end of your fishing rod? Metal. Is it special metal? Does it do something special? No. What does it? What, what about this metal? Is this metal here? It sticks. Do you know what we call that metal that sticks? Remember, Georgia? Do we remember what we called it? Some um, magnet. Let's see if we can catch some fish with our magnet. Can you point to any actual children who are better off under this system than they would have been under the old system? Well, I think it's fair to say that the children who are less able at the beginning of the year um, have benefited enormously because there has been no pressure on them to learn inappropriately. The children who are always ready to learn will do so through most educational systems, but for the children that need that extra time, children who haven't had the good speaking and listening skills, who haven't had stories read to them, for a variety of reasons, those children need to be socialised and they need to spend time with good adults to bring them on to, to a point where they are ready to learn in a more formal way. I came not really knowing what to expect, but on the surface, actually, I'm reassured in a way that there's not a huge amount of difference because it means we're not too far behind the Welsh system if we were to pick up now and start working on it. I do know a large number of my staff would be very interested in coming to the school. They're intrigued by the way the Welsh system is going. Uh, they, I think, unanimously approve of the way it's going but do have concerns, which I think most professionals would have, of how that would be seen from what can be critical audiences of the uh, parent group and the government, possibly. Many of these children, when they first start first school, can't walk on anything that is uneven, because they're not used to walking on anything that is uneven, certainly not used to going out into a woodland. Uh, area. The foundation phase encourages all schools in Wales, even the most urban, to use the outdoors as another classroom, where children can work on a daily basis. Dufferin is lucky enough to have a piece of land on the edge of a wood. Can anyone remember what a chicken is in Welsh? No. It's a yam. Me. Yes. A yam. Your chicken. Your chicken. Are we going to find any chickens in forest school today? Do you think? No. <laughs> I don't think so. Chicken. But what do chickens eat? Worms. Chicken. Worms. We try and have a one to four, one to five adult child ratio when we're out in the forest. So shall we try and collect some insects ourselves? Yeah. Shall we try? OK, I'll get some pops. Come with us and we'll try and get some pops. Have you got a friend to work with, Josh? That happens. Are they given guidelines at this point? Can yes. They wonder no, they were they, they've all... Yeah, no, they can wander, they know where they can wander, up to the orange fence and to the fence at the back. So they're, they are safe. And the stream is fenced off. The stream is fenced right. off. So they're, they're completely uh, safe, but they do love to get behind bushes mm. and, and, you know, have that feeling of being out in, out in the woods. And that one is... Do you think you're going to find a spider in there? Look. What else do you think we might find in there? The wriggles. What do you think? They must look. We might find a wriggly thing. You think there's something in the grass? Oh, what's that? Hey, that's tiny. It's red. Is it? It's black. Or it might be red. Could be red. 
Oh, do they? Which yeah, one do you think it is? There we go. Oh, yep. Quick, you. before it bites me. Hey, did it? Am I bite? Yeah, it might eat the armadillo. I don't think it will eat the um, wood lice. Mine. Ah. Ah. It's hoped that if children spend more time outdoors, their health, fitness and physical development will improve. Phil's keen to find out from the Forestry Commission staff whether something like this could work at his school in Bath. Is it different from a conservation area? We have a conservation area which... I think it's more of an approach rather than a place. Right. So it's the idea of using a woodland setting mm. on a regular, ongoing basis. Um, because not every school would have this resource available. No. Have the space for it or be in the environment, an urban environment. No, um, although we do have schools in Cardiff it. who use mm. the um, Haley Park and we have a school which literally does a forest school in a corner of a field with one tree. Right. But only taking about four children out mm. and planting and leaving the grass to grow and having some logs brought in. Right. And they can explore and have that freedom in the same way as Right, because the smaller the area, the less usage there can be really with that. I having a huge impact on what you're trying to study. Absolutely. Wearing the grass away. And yeah, and that's something we've looked at very carefully here, haven't we? Yes. Um, we come out in all weathers. All the only the time world. we don't come out if it's very windy. That's the only time. Because of branches. And because of trees in this mm. place. That's your risk assessment. But that's our risk deploy. assessment. Absolutely. But we come out if it's snowing, if it's raining, Snow if would it's be cold. Mm. And the children really see the area changing, mm. um, which teaches them so much. But also they really get to know the area, all its different moods and Well, I was saying on the it, bridge, they were building respect for the natural environment, mm. but not, not an over-caring respect of you don't touch anything or... Mm. So yeah. it's a very much a working respect. Well, that's right. I mean, they're never going to learn to value it they if they're always told to just absolutely. stand behind a fence and look and at it. it. Oh, Shannon, I think I would like to see what you've got in your what I've learned that is actually on the surface at the moment there's not a great deal of difference between the approach in the two schools but that difference will become I think probably very marked over the next few years when the foundation phase spreads through year one and year two and they become more activity led learners and I think if people come in and see it, actually there won't be concerns because they can see people, children learning. And as we went through reception and through um, year one, you can see that the children are learning. There's writing going on, there's reading going on. Maybe in a less formal sense, but the learning is still there. So that's a great um, reassurance to me. And I also love the Forest School. The, the concept of a forest school was rather worrying, but actually seeing it in action and talking to people about it, it is well within the reach of, I would suspect, any school on a different scale. Look at that! Ah. Oh. I can smell the popcorn! It's nice, isn't it? It'll be all lovely. I love the popcorn. Sweet.